how do I figure out if I'm doing the right optimization? Does everybody see my screen? Yes, Mark. All right. Um, and uh, some of my other DC team members, uh, Norm and Rachel might have shown folks using uh, Miro for their presentations. And uh, as part of my schmoozing, I'll say that I'm gonna do the same thing and I'll be moving around a little bit. It let me uh, put some information in that's pretty information dense and I can zoom into it later. Also, it was just a great way for me to brainstorm the presentation. So um, there'll be a little moving around. I'm gonna do that right now. Um, so my talk today is about things that we've been learning about Hyrax and Triple IF and Cantaloupe and um, all the interactions in between. Um, and, and, and more meta, it's about how do I figure out which optimizations to do and where to spend my time. So um, as always, great wisdom from XKCD. Um, I actually go back to their table about how much time should I spend optimizing things a lot of the time to remind myself that, you know, Sometimes the juice isn't worth the squeeze. Um, and then I happen to find the, the cartoon on the right here um, that you know sometimes our, our best laid plans, and you'll see in a moment, even my best laid plans for this talk, sometimes go off the rails and how do we keep ourselves on the rails? Um, so that, that's sort of the meta content of this talk in addition to talking about um, Triple IF and, and Hyrax. Um, so you, know, you can spend a lot of time optimizing things or a lot of time doing what you think are gonna be optimizations. And so one of the questions in, in our work was, how do we figure out if we're doing the right optimizations and, and is our time paying off? So in our particular use case, um, ours was that um, we have this new repository up. Uh, we've been building this and, and rebuilding this and, and making this great new shiny thing. Um, and it's here and uh, I go look for something. Move you all out of the way for a second. Um, and I have an image and because I've been preparing my talk, it's not gonna be as awful as it once was, but you know, here's my great new book. Um, it's a thing that we have in the office that we kind of love. And I cut this page and it took forever to load. Um, and, and as my colleague Max pointed out, you know, that's gonna be one of the first things people experience and that's gonna be kind of painful. Um, so, so before we launch into let's do technical work, um, it made sense to sort of stop and think about where are our bottlenecks, what's gonna happen? Um, so, so for the course of this talk, I do want to uh, add a, or lay out a few sort of what the bumpers are on, on what we're looking at here. Um, this is a, currently a Hyrax 2.9.6 based application that started its life out way back when in Hyrax 1. So it's been upgraded over and over. So there may be artifacts and legacy things to our configuration that got carried forward um, that wouldn't happen in a newly generated Hyrax 3 application. Uh, we're using um, the default install of Cantaloupe 5. Um, and almost definitely your mileage is going to vary, but I think the process that I walked through uh, works for not just images, but a lot of technical and performance issues. Um, so hopefully the process it overall is useful and the particular data I think actually does sort of uh, tend to relatively be true for a lot of different environments that we've looked at, but, but understand that this is all looking at a very specific environment. Um, so that thing was going slow. Let's take a look at it and figure out what's going on. So, so the first thing in trying to understand is it occurred to me that there's a pretty snazzy network inspector built into Safari and Chrome and if I just go to my page and I open up the network inspector and I start loading things, I can kind of see what's going on in real time. Um, and the key things to know on this picture is time flows from left to right. Green is wait times and blue is load times. Um, 
So I can zoom into a little bit of this. And I'll see that there's a page load. This turns out to be the same ID as my work ID. So this is the basic work page load. And gosh, that's a really long green bar. Green, 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 waiting, 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 waiting. Oh, look, there's a little blip of blue content. So it takes, it takes Hyrax quite a while to, to pull together all the metadata and all the information to build this entire page. That includes the, the labels and, and fields and descriptions, that includes the thumbnails, that includes other things. Um, in fact, on the bottom of this page, there's a set of thumbnails here in Universal Viewer, and there's a different set of thumbnails here in the file attachments or the, the items list. Um, I'm going to explicitly not talk about these today. These are thumbnails that are generated and stored as derivatives elsewhere. Turns out they're pretty zippy um, and they're going to fly right by as I look through my network traffic. Um, so just, just to call out something that you may notice or think about. So what I'm really interested in and what was really slow to begin with was the stuff that's happening in this black box. And in some ways, Universal Viewer is a black box to us. So my page load takes some time, but that happens. Um, there's my little thumbnails. They're all pretty, they've got some latency. Here's a bunch of scripts and fonts and other things. I can see that by looking at the type list here in my inspector. Keeping looking long, it's waiting, it's processing. Here's some more stuff, 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 stuff. Um, wait, here's something that might be interesting, manifest. If I know anything about IIIF, I know that there's a thing called a manifest that handles the organization of everything. And lo and behold, that manifest time, waiting, 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 waiting. Um, if you can see here, here's 200 milliseconds and here's, or 2000 milliseconds and here's 3000 milliseconds. That green line is almost a full second long, kind of a long time. And then I don't know if the color is showing through, but the blue again is the actual content download. So. There's almost a second long to, to wait for just a flash of content to download. That's something we might want to look at later. And then, hmm, there's all these default things going on. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. But again, a lot of them have pretty long wait times. There's a mod, there, there's our, Biggest download we've seen, 33K. Everything else is in the two and 3K. Um, wait, 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 wait. And sort of over here is when finally everything is loaded. Um, so I can just use this view to sort of figure out where are the big green bars um, and what are those things. And again, the two, the, the three, three biggest green bars were over here. Uh, the initial page load with all the metadata and all the things. Not going to worry about that today because that's not really the IIIF service. Um, then there's the manifest. We'll talk more about that. And then there is the um, files themselves or the thumbnails themselves. So um, like I said, we're not going to look at the work itself. We are going to look at the manifest and we're going to look at the um, Little image is called default.jpg. So what did we see? Um, the item view had a pretty long delay, not too much actual content. Uh, I didn't pay much attention to it, but there's a CSS style sheet and some application JavaScript that loads. Those are some of the bigger things that load, but the, the delay is pretty small. Um, some more JavaScript. Then finally, that triple IF manuscript Manifest, that has a long delay, not much payload, some more JavaScript, and then a bunch of images called default.jpg. Um, if I go, and actually we just looked at a multi-image work, so um, I'll talk about multi versus single 
for a minute. The, the main difference to cut to the chase is that the manifest on a multi-image work tends to take much longer to load and generate than on single image works. And then the last thing is if I zoom, um, the first time I go to things, there might be a very long delay as those derivatives and zoom um, fragments are created. But Cantaloupe or Riff, if I'm using that, typically are only sending 512 by 512 pixel tiles over me. So the payload is really tiny on most of those things when I pan and zoom and do other kinds of information, other kinds of transformation. Um, so I want to quickly look at Bion. So as I zoom this in, what Universal Viewer is doing is transferring over blocks um, 512 pixels at a time, or 512 in chunks of 512 by 512. I'm getting this same kind of network traffic, except I'm getting a bunch of chunks. Those look like these links here are what are actually being called. Those are getting set up in an image tile. So the first, the, the times one zoom is my one here. Then I get two tiles that are half that size for my next level of zoom in. Then for the next level of zoom in, I get six more tiles because um, my tiles are square, but my viewport is rectangular. So I just need enough tiles to cover my viewport. Uh, the, the key thing to know there is that when I zoom, oh, and when the zoom control is in the wrong place, I can't get to what I need to. When I zoom in and out, I get a lot of these tiles. And so that can pretty negatively impact my performance. So in thinking about all of this, sort of what's going on and what do I really wanna be testing for? Um, loading the main page, not gonna worry about loading the small images for the preview or for the for the items page, those thumbnails, that's not fast, we're not gonna worry. The manifest, that took a long time. All of those default.jpegs, particularly when my cache wasn't warm, those took a long time. So, um, and then also people are likely to page through things when I have multi-pages work that works, I might go through. Zoom, zoom. Uh, no, not there. I might scroll through this. I might page this way. So I can go through and look at all that and say, what might I want to do? How, where are their bottlenecks? What might I want to change? I came up with a series of things I might want to change here whether I use Riff or Cantaloupe, if I want to try a bigger server, if I want to do caching, if I want to try and pre-optimize the images. And having done that, I can start thinking about, well, what am I really checking for? So time to load the manifests for single or multiple works, time for the thumbnails, time to zoom. I can go take all of those things. And again, using sort of the, the network viewer that I, was just traffic viewer that I was just showing. I can take and sort of create a schema for those things. And I can use a tool like JMeter to create myself a test plan to sort of emulate what I might be doing as a user. So I've set up JMeter here. I set up, what does it look like to look, look up a single image work? I load the manifest. It loads a couple different sizes of images. I can look at zooming. Zooming gives me the preview and then a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of tiles. And then I can look at a multi-page work and I can sort of bring up the initial work and then see what it builds up in the content pane. So I can do, I can capture those requests and replay them. I have a couple of players here that basically 
emulate that I have three users starting one minute apart or one second apart, uh, trying these five times so that I sort of average out my test over time. I can set this up. This lets me generate a report something like this. It goes out and does all that network traffic and all those requests multiple times. So you can see I'm getting five, seven, three, eight samples. It'll eventually be up to eight, 15 for each. That gives me an average over all of these. I can then look at that and sort of start thinking about what do my aggregate times look like? What are good and bad? Um, I talked about sort of where, where do I want to go? Well, I want to start with the benchmark of what, what's my current performance? What's my baseline bad performance look like? That's my V1. V2, you know, you can always throw money at a problem. So what if I just use twice as large a server? That's always a good thing to test. B3, what's, what's my caching doing for me? And particularly, it turns out there's a setting to, to turn on caching of that manifest. What does that do? What is, might it look like if I run Cantaloupe instead of Rift? Um, what might it look like if I turn caching on in Cantaloupe? Because it turns out that the Cantaloupe default install does not turn caching on. And then, wow, wouldn't it be neat if I could pre-optimize these images for display and, and show PTIFs? So I captured and created that test, did my benchmarking on a basic system. So it's a, and we, we run our servers on Amazon. I'm using a P3A extra large. That's I think eight CPUs and 32 gig or something like that. Um, we're running Hyrax to Riff, no caching. Um, what are my key insights from the basic testing? One is that UV makes lots of requests for, for lots of the image fragments and lots of tiles. Um, two is that the uncached images down over here, um, if I look at my max time for a fav icon, there's a six second load time, there's a four second load time, there's a three second, there's a two, there's a one. So that first hit when nothing is in the cache, um, it can be pretty awful. Um, on the flip side, once things are warmed up in the cache, my minimum time for those requests are about 62 milliseconds. That's, that's pretty fine. Um, the average bytes transferred, again, all of these things are all relatively small. The biggest thing here is actually um, the, the multi-page manifest for my 250-page book. So what if I just throw money at this problem? Um, and I am gonna run out of time shortly, so I am gonna jump to the chase in a minute. Um, money can help me a little bit, but it turns out that Amazon charges me twice as much for the next size server up. And if I look at the numbers, I only get about a 25% bump. Um, so I can pay twice as much money to get a 25% performance improvement, if I don't have much time to do anything else, that's a good solution. But if not, then um, that's not great. I have posted these slides. I'm sorry I took so long in the setup, but I'm gonna jump down to the findings. So for manifests, the easy thing is to buy a bigger server. It's also easy to turn on caching. You might wanna pre-cache your manifest so that the first person coming to a thing doesn't get the horrible hit. Um, and you might, if you have special, special requirements, you might wanna create kind of a custom manifest store. Um, that's, that's pretty advanced. Um, for images themselves, again, buying a bigger server will help some, but not as much as the dollars you have to spend for it. Um, enable caching, uh, you get that free sort of with Riff. You have to turn that on with Cantaloupe. Um, that helps a lot. Uh, you can use Cantaloupe as an external server. That does give you about a 20% bump on RIF. You can move your images out of Fedora and onto a disk store somewhere. That again gives you a bump. And in those use cases, I sort of summarized when you might wanna do those things. So basically, if you have a workflow that already puts things on disk somewhere and that you have a known ID schema, 
setting up Cantaloupe to just use those is a great solution since you already have them. Um, if you want to be able to tune your image performance, frankly, running something like Cantaloupe is helpful because you can configure that. It's memory, it's caching, it's other things a lot more detailed than you can for the particular kinds of images you have than you can for RIF. Um, so I will stop there since I'm running out of time. Uh, I do have these posted to the Sanvera community repo. There's some resources that I used in, the, in preparing the, the test. And if you wanna see the detailed numbers or if you have any questions about the numbers themselves, um, feel free to reach out to me in, in the Connect channel or in Slack. I think that's it. Thanks, Mark. I did not see any uh, questions come through on Connect or on the um, uh, Zoom panel. Um, if anybody had any questions, we do have a couple minutes. All right, well, Mark invited folks to follow up with him on Slack. So uh, if you uh, wake up in the middle of the night with any questions. Oh, here we go. Um, Dal wants to ask, is uh, Cantaloupe the only image server that you tested? Cantaloupe's the one that we use most commonly. Um, my guess is that looking at IIP or one of the others probably shows you similar sorts of things. That the, I think the main advantage of having, a, so, so yes, Cantaloupe is the only one we tested. Um, and, the, and the main issue is that having an off-board image server lets you tune and configure that server separately from your web application, which is sometimes helpful. Thanks, Mark. Um, how about, did you end up turning on HTTP2? Um, so we don't in Cantaloupe because we handle all of that at a higher layer. Um, so um, Cantaloupe is a very basic HTTP configuration. Um, where do you keep the results of your performance testing and how do you keep that organized? Um, so again, the, the goal was to like make quick decisions about what to do. Um, and you'll see actually that my, uh, my PTIF derivatives was kind of a fail test. It really is, is more of, it's not about saving and, and being able to look back. It's, uh, being able to save that test script is super useful so that I can use that in the future. So we've often just taken that that's a little bit of uh, JSON that can get saved into your application repo. So we often save that um, JMeter test script somewhere in the repo itself of the project that we're working on. The test results are in some ways to, to my mind ephemeral. They're helping us decide, are we, are we putting our efforts in the right direction? Um, they are in this presentation though. <laughs> Thanks. Um, one more question. What were the source images, uh, JP2 Pyramid TIFF? Um, so again, my, that, that was the part that I, I didn't quite show, but if you go look at the results, that was where my fail was. Um, so what we actually have in place is a derivative chain that will create those using image magic um, from whatever we ingest into the repository. Um, but wiring those up for cantaloupe to find those on disk uh, was a piece that was a little more fragile and complicated than I was up to in the, in the time getting ready for the talk. Uh, 